In this video, we will be discussing about fine tuning and embedding from OpenAI context and the difference between them. Okay. Hi, this is Sohan. I welcome you all to my channel P2P Learning. Let's get started. So, in OpenAI, we have discussed like there are three uh, generative AI models. Now, let us take any one model, like let us take the GPT model. Okay, so we know that in GPT model, we take text input and text output, right? But we also have discussed the challenges of this. So one of the challenges like its knowledge base has a cutoff date of September 2021. So let's say Chandrayaan, Chandrayaan 3. Okay. So if you ask about Chandrayaan 3 to generative AI model, even to generate uh, GPT-4, it will not be able to give you the answer because the knowledge cutoff date is September 2021 and Chandrayaan 3 mission has done in 2023. Right. So so that means if you want to now let's say isro wants to make this information available to its internal employees like who who was the project director what kind of machinery what kind of robotics it has used what kind of fuel it has used what kind of technology it has used what are the foreign collaborations what are the cost what is the cost of different component okay what are the optimization they have made what are the errors what are their learning okay so let's say from Chandrayaan 3 mission, this program, they have collected all this information and they want to create one or they want to put this information in generative AI model such that if their employee want to know anything about Chandrayaan 3, they should be able to know. Okay. So using generate GPT-4, even GPT-4, they will not be able to do that because GPT-4 will not have this knowledge. So how they can achieve that? They can put this particular knowledge, whatever knowledge they have gathered or whatever knowledge they want to make available to their employees, they can put this knowledge in generative AI models or GPT models. Okay. And then they, if, if they put this knowledge to this GPT models, then it, they, it will become a custom model and that custom model would be available only to ISRO, not to anyone else. Nobody else can access that model. Okay. So this is called fine tuning. So, so, understand it. How we can do that? We can take a base model. Currently, as of now, as of today, the current base model is GPT 3.5 Turbo. Okay. So, this we can take this base model. So, when we take GPT 3.5 Turbo, that means we are taking the capability, machine learning capability or AI capability of GPT 3.5 Turbo as well. And at the same time, it has a data cutoff. It has all the data, publicly available data till September 2021. We take this base model and then we fine tune this model means we train with our own data on top of this model. So that means we are using the power or capability of AI of this model and we are putting our own custom data on, so on top of that. Okay. So fine tuning has an API. So we can call that API. We can pass, we can prepare our data in a, in, in a proper format. and using that format we can call that fine tuning apis and pass those data and we can say that okay train this gpt 3.5 turbo model with my data okay, this is the training part we train this gpt 3.5 turbo model with my data now after training is completed it will give me a custom model that custom model would be specific for me this model is not available to anyone else now what isro will do Israel will take that model and it they will deploy that model and create a solution. Let's say they have created a chatbot solution using this model. Now, whoever has access to this solution, this chatbot, they can come to the chatbot and they will ask about the questions of Chandrayaan 3. Now, if you ask about Chandrayaan 3, this model will be able to answer you about Chandrayaan 3 because this model is trained on this data. So, it has take the GPT 3.5 Turbo with the AI capability, with the data, everything. And then on top of that, it has trained the specific data. So now your model is in this level, means it has all the things that GPT 3.5 has. At the same time, it has the delta. This is the extra data that you have provided and you, are, you have got a new model. Okay, so that means you have created a custom model using fine tuning. So this is called fine tuning. Okay, now in simpler terms, I'm trying to explain you. Okay, now what is embedding? Embedding is similar things. Let's say same example. Isro wants to make this knowledge available to their employees. Through embedding, how they can do? First, let us understand the embedding process. Embedding In embedding process, what is done is 
all this knowledge first isro will convert as a vector so they will call an so for converting this as a vector they will call the openai embedding apis openai provides an embedding apis they will call this embedding apis and they will pass this information uh, to that embedding apis and that text information this text information will be converted into vector by embedding apis and this vector will be stored in a database now what is vector okay so it's a complex concept i will try to explain this as simple as possible that i can okay vector is very simple it's it's a it's like converting a text into a number okay and and the similar text i mean the the text which has the similar meaning they will convert this two text as a very close number let's say happy they are converting as 60 for example it is not real for example they are converting the word happy as in number 60 okay glad this word glad they will be converted as a number let's say 60.1 okay so so that means the the, the closer the number is the there is a probability that this two words are most similar the happy and glad probably a similar word similar meaning so their number their vector would be very closer number so like 60 60.1 okay hope i have explained it that is the simplest way i have found it to explain what is what what does vector means okay now now when we call an embedding api and let's say we have isro has all the details similarly uses all the details of chandrayaan 3 they have the knowledge so they have put all this knowledge in a file okay and now they are passing this file the data from this file in chunk in the embedding apis and saying that convert the entire text into vector so it will no, it will convert the entire text into vector and it will store this vector either in a file or you can even store this vector in a vector database okay so they are storing the entire text in a vector from a they are not doing anything else they are just converting it to vector and storing the vector okay now let's say this entire knowledge is in seven pages okay so in seven pages whatever the token is if the token limit is now now let's say you are using gpt 3.5 turbo 8k model 8 8000 tokens model so it support 8000 tokens that means if this seven pages is less than 7 8000 token you can pass the entire text in a single embedding calls if it is more than 8000 you need to divide into chunks and you need to pass it to the embedding api right this embedding api what it will do it will convert the entire text into vector i told what vector is and it will store this text in a vector form in a vector database as is okay now whenever anyone is asking a question then this what what would be the first step is first uh, the solution will take this question it will call the embedding apis with this question and then it will convert these questions into a vector first okay then once it gets the vector of the question then it will compare this vector of the questions against the vector database okay entire vector database and the entry in the vector database which is very closer that number so we already we know what is vector is we have converted the entire text into vector and store into the vector database let's say there are seven, uh, seven or seven pages and there are like 70 documents of seven pages so let's say we have created 70 entries in vector databases okay so now this questions vector will be matched to all the rows all the 70s vector all the 70 vectors that we have already stored in the vector database and it will find which one which entry number is very closer to this number okay and it will share send or it will return that entry as sequence ones means this is the most closer to this question so there is a high probability that the answer to this questions might be in this vector or in this file similarly it will also return 2 3 4 and all how many entries you want to return you can mention it will return accordingly okay probably it is saying that k is very closer to this but actually it is not there then you can actually search to the second one so that is the reason you need to return the entire list okay with 1 2 3 4 sequence now once you call convert your uh, questions to em embedding vectors and you find to the vector database and you get the similar most similar data from the vector database where this questions answer might be there then you can pass this data to gpt 
Now you are passing this data to GPT along with this question. Okay and asking GPT to find the relevant answer of these questions from this text. So what you are doing, let's say, let's say your, your uh, uh, vector database, when you are searching against the vector database, your questions, let's say vector database returns 10 entries. Okay. So first you will take the first entry, which has the sequence one, means which is the most likely similar, which, where you will get the answer of these questions most likely. Okay. That is the sequence one entry. So that sequence one entry will take that text first you will take and you will pass to the GPT okay and you will along with that question and you will ask okay find the answer of this question from this text okay now GPT will do its internal search because GPT is very powerful in searching and it will say that okay this is the relevant answer if it is there now for say for for say let's say the answer GPT could not find in this relevant answer GPT could not find in this text then what you can do you can again go back you already have the list of all the returned vectors. So you will take the second one and the, you pass it to the uh, GPT or okay GPT 3.5 turbo, you pass it to GPT 3.5 turbo, this text and the questions and again you will ask find the answer of this question from this text. Let's say this time GPT finds and it will return you the answer. Now you might be confused, you are getting the list from vector database as a vector then how you are passing this vector to gpt we are not passing the vector to gpt this vector thing is actually we are only doing for matching matching the similar text once the matching is done now you already have the original questions because you have already got the original questions then you have converted into vector so you before vector what is the original text that you already have let's say you have already stored that original questions in some text variable Okay, okay. Now, the vector you are storing, when you are storing the vector in vector database, at the same time, you are also putting the reference to the original text in the vector database. So, you know for this vector, what is the original text? That is also you know. Either you are storing the original text in the database or you are storing a reference. Let's say this is this file. This vector is for this particular file, you are putting the file location in the database. So, when you file the vector, you also find the original file name. So we are fetching the original file name from there and then you are fetching the original content from there. So now you have the original content and the original questions in text format, not in vector format. That you are passing to GPT to do the matching and give you the relevant answer. That's how embedding works. Okay. So, so now you understand for, for ISRO purpose, ISRO can also do the things in embedding format as well because they can put all their knowledge as an embeddings and whenever their employees will ask any questions, they will convert it, the questions into vector. They will find, find in, the, in the vector database, find the relevant document and then it will pass to the GPT and find the relevant answer. Okay. So the major difference here is if you want to use fine tuning, then you are putting all the data into fine tuning model. So that means your employee can directly ask to the model. You need not to go anywhere else. Your employee ask, you will directly go to the model and ask and they will provide the answer. It's already there in the model. So your prompt size would be lesser. Why your prompt, prompt size would be lesser? Because probably customer is, might be asking uh, same questions. But when you are asking that to your model, in case of fine tuning, you are directly asking the question to the model. But in case of uh, embedding, what you are doing? You are first finding out the, after finding out the relevant text from vector database, you are part passing this relevant text and the questions as a prompt. So your prompt size will always be bigger in embedding, but in fine tuning the prompt size will always be smaller. Okay. The second thing is, the second thing is, you always need to maintain a vector database or vector file, uh, vector embedding database, vector database or embedding files in, in some repository that has to be maintained. So in embeddings always first you need to whenever you are getting a questions first you need to convert it into vector then you need to do the matching after matching you need to f pass the matched text and the questions to gpt so multiple step involved so it will take much more time than fine tuning because fine tuning you're directly asking the question directly getting the answer one step but for embedding it is multi step so embedding process is always slower than uh, fine tuning it has to be 
so these are the these are the basic difference of fine tuning and uh, embedding and and one more major difference is that embedding you can use only for text data search if you want to do text data search like from multiple documents you want to search a particular answer particular topic embedding might work okay fine tuning will also work embedding will also work there but but let's say if you want to derive some data calculation if you want to do some calculation then embedding cannot work let's say for example for example for chandrayaan to same example let's say they have invented a new formula okay new new in rockets under rocket science they have they have let's say find out a very new formula in 2023 okay based on this formula if you pass some values and based on this formula you want to calculate the value okay what would be the final value for doing this you have to train your fine tune model you cannot achieve this to embedding because if you pass this embedding can only search the vector and give you the relevant text it can say what is the formula new formula it cannot calculate the formula means if you are giving the parameters it cannot calculate it can give you the formula but it cannot calculate embeddings but in fine tuning you can calculate even you can calculate you, you can put this logic inside uh, uh, find using fine tuning you can put this formula and you can fine tune your model in such a way if you are asking or passing those parameter and asking for the calculation fine tuning model can give you the calculation in embedding also you can achieve this but you need to do a lot of other things direct embedding you cannot do that but in fine tuning you can directly do that okay so these are the basic difference i i have tried to clarify it in in a layman language and as details as possible such that you would be able to understand what it actually is and you would understand structurally how it works okay so if you have any question still just feel free to ask in the comment section okay and if you like my video please subscribe my channel i need at least 1000 subscriber and also please like my video and also please share it to your uh, peer peer groups your friend circle if they are interested okay that will be a great help to me thank you thank you so much bye